Welcome back to our two minute tips and tricks. As always, I'm Alicia Kelly from West High School. And I'm Katie Dixon from Highland High School. And today we have Katie Mazzy here with us again. She's going to show us a little bit about the FAFSA process and how to get it started. So Katie, take it away. Yeah, first we wanted to start with a little cat cameo, one of the <laughs> joys of the coronavirus working from home. So you know, <laughs> a little fun extra there for you. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about how to do the FAFSA, especially, you know, if you're out of school right now, obviously it can be really intimidating to do the FAFSA by yourself. So I want to make sure you have the tools you need to be successful. So I'm going to share my screen really quick and we're going to start with what do I need to complete the FAFSA? So you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need to know your social security number. It's really important. If you have a driver's license, great. If not, you can skip that part. And then for your parents, for sure, you'll need these items. And then if you were working and filing taxes yourself, you'll need them too. First up is a W-2, which is a statement of income basically from your employer. And you want the 2018 copy of your W-2. You'll also want the 2018 tax return, which should be a 1040 um, for your parents or yourself if you filed. And then for your parents' assets, um, or your own assets, the thing that you'll most need is your checking and savings account balance. So things like the home that you live in or your retirement account, for example, your parents' retirement account, that does not count against you on the FAFSA, so you won't need those items. Really, the big one is checking and savings. So after you've gathered those items, you'll want to visit fsaid.ed.gov, and this is where you create your FSA ID. It's your username and password for the FAFSA. You'll want to create one as a student, but one of your parents is also going to want to create one so that they can sign your FAFSA at the end is really the big reason. So once you've got the FSA IDs created, you'll go to FAFSA.gov, or if you don't have a computer at home, you can download the My Student Aid mobile app for your phone, and you'll just click Start here. I know I just mentioned that you'll want your parents to create an FSA ID, but that's for later. That doesn't come into play right away. When you start the FAFSA, you're going to want to say, I am the student, and then you're going to want to enter your own FSA ID, username and password. And then finally, if you get stuck, we have a FAFSA walkthrough video on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Utah Futures Official. Right here on the homepage, we go through the entire 2020-2021 FAFSA. We narrate over the top so you can kind of follow along and get your questions answered. You can also leave us a comment and we'll respond to it if you have additional questions. So that's all I have for you guys. That's so awesome and quick and easy. Um, just look below this video. You'll see that there's a link directly to that video to help you get through your FAFSA. Also, Alicia and I are both here if you need us. We can always reach out to Katie. Katie can always reach out to you. We're all in this together. So advise you later.